have to have a grooming arm. If you're grooming your dog at home, you can use an outdoor table. These will hook onto any table as long as it's not too deep of a lip on the table. An outdoor table, your kitchen island, your dining room table, a card table depending on the size and weight of your dog. You can attach this to any table. So it just slides on like that and it clamps down. This is essential to have a grooming arm, guys. You have to have a grooming arm if you're grooming your dog so you can properly harness them if you want to get good behavior. And it's the safest thing for them. And these are adjustable. So this little screw turns and you lock it into place when you adjust it to fit your dog with the grooming loop. Groomer's Helper Grooming Loop. This is essential. Of all different types of grooming loops, this is what I want you to have. So That's how it works is almost like a dog collar. It has a release so you can adjust it. So open it up. You're going to put it around your dog like a collar. So Vader here, snap it on. Turn this down underneath his chin so that the little O-ring is under his chin. Adjust it so that it's snug, not tight and it's ready. Then this is ready to hook onto your front hitch to your grooming arm or to your grooming anchor from Groomer's Harness. That is a fantastic product and that's how that works. It basically goes on your dog like a collar. So you clip it on like this. You spin her around. You want this little, this little O-ring in the front of your dog right under their chin. And you want the grooming loop positioned right under their chin because her trachea is right here, right here. And we want to avoid the trachea. So we're right under her jaw. It's the best position. And just as tight as you would make a collar. As you can see, that's not too tight. Then we hook it to our grooming arm. Now our grooming arm is very important. They're all adjustable. You can see all the slack in the, groom, in the grooming loop right now on Misty. That means if, if I'm trimming her toenails, she can bring her head down to what I'm doing and, uh, and mess around, you know. We want to keep them away from where we're doing our business. So we want the grooming loop, if your dog is standing, if they won't stand like Misty, just hold your hand under her abdomen. Soon enough, she'll do it. We're going to adjust the grooming arm. Stand your doggy up. Misty, you're being silly. And you can see that this is under her jaw, not on her trachea. The reason for this other little loopy loop is for this second hitch. Now you can use a, a grooming leash, another grooming loop if you want that has a hook on it. You would hook it here and tie it to your grooming arm. But you want to be sure that your grooming hitch is pointing down, pulling away from her trachea. So now, look at all this play we have in here. See that, guys? It's totally pulling away from her trachea, but she's safely and securely harnessed on the table. So now we can do anything that we needed to do, like say, trimming nails. She's in a position to not be in control of that. We're in control of it, and she's safe on the grooming table, even though she's very upset about it. Now she's getting better. They will calm down. It's not a problem. It's all normal. Now I have something super cool to show you. You noticed I was using this hitch, but another option that is really safe, especially for a dog that we're trying to avoid any pressure around the trachea. By the way, this is Vader. <laughs> Some of you already know Vader. He's our demo dog. So this groomer's harness is fully adjustable to your dog. Big dog, little dog, all dogs, okay? This is the groomer's harness. This is how it works. You adjust it to each dog. You slide their little nose and their head with these two tab hooks in front of your dog. You will then attach that to your grooming arm. You will take these little harness straps, they come under your dog, and you've now created 
kind of a harness instead of any type of noose. Take the slack out of your grooming arm. And now this groomer's anchor, this is amazing. So now you can hook that to one of the hooks in front. It's just totally adjustable. So you can bring your dog close to the grooming arm, which is what you want when you're grooming. So your dog can't back away from the table, can't dance and slide off the table because you have him secured right here. The groomer's harness is designed so that as you're working with your dog, you can unhook one side and keep him hooked on the other side. So when you unhook this, then you can continue to work with your clipper work or whatever you're doing, brushing, drying, fluffing. Now I'll show you another way that you can use this anchor. So if you mount the anchor on the side of your grooming table and the strap is adjustable, now you're anchoring your dog and he won't be able to rear up on you, which oftentimes they will. Um, and this will work with the groomer's helper lead too, guys, that has this little O-ring in the front. I use the anchor all the time. This is the anchor. You can use it on the grooming arm as I showed you earlier with Misty, how we had her harnessed on, I called it a grooming hitch. I loved that when you walked in and you saw my beautiful scissors, that are just so gorgeous. They are. Sapphire to match this is nice too. Ring, that one of the first things you did was you started um, scissoring them, and then you mm -hmm. said, oh, this needs, and you began to adjust the scissors. So you loosened up the- Tension dial. Tension dial. And of course, I didn't know to do that. And- now, So you said, we have to film this. Yes, because I think other people would also want to know that. So tell yeah. us how- so I just, you know, I, I've had them now for a while. I've been using them, didn't know it needed it. How would somebody who just bought one know that it needs most? To be most up? of your shears will come with either a tension dial or a tension screw here that can be adjusted. Kenshi tends to use tension dials, which makes it more convenient. So basically, they just click, 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 tighter, 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 looser, looser, looser. So I'm going to show you a shear that is set up properly, which is this one. When I let That's the top you blade- set it up yesterday. I did, but I'm gonna show you one that isn't. So when you let the top blade drop, you want it to stop far before it bangs into your, to the other finger rest. Instead of boom, you know, you don't want that. That would be too loose. Like if I tighten this up three clicks, look, it's not moving at all. It's not moving. So I'm going to loosen it up two, one, two clicks. That's pretty good right there, actually. Right there. Stops itself before it bangs down. That, that's the perfect amount of tension on your shear. And here's an example of one that, that needs adjusted. So I just noticed I opened, she has this scorpion shear made by Kenji. This is a great shear too. Very light. This is a good shear. So when we let that fall, it doesn't fall. So let's give it three lefty loosey clicks. Ah, it moved a little. One, two. Oh, we're getting somewhere. Maybe one, two left, to the left. Oh, looky there, that's perfect. It stops. That gives you, it, it's so much easier to scissor. You, you, it doesn't make you work for your scissors. They just work for you. Now we're gonna oil these. This is something that doesn't need to be done all the time. And Kenji sends oil with you. We're gonna open these up like this, guys. And we're gonna put, be careful, don't ever touch these. These are sharp, sharp, sharp. Put one drop there, one drop there. I've already cut myself with those. I've never before cut myself with any scissors, any. Really? And I have cut myself oh. with those, so Yeah, I, you, can't, to you can't even touch it. And then just work the shear. Use, you know, the action of the shear. 
And now we're going to open it back up. We're going to use a microfiber cloth, or in this case, we're just going to wipe it with a paper towel. And there again, be careful, don't touch that blade. It is sharp. And just wipe off the excess and clean your shears. I clean my shears every day after I use them. I spray Cool Care on them for, leave it sit for about 15 seconds and then wipe it off. And it just cleans off any, uh, if a dog sneezes and spits on, I mean, believe it or not, it happens. If you don't hold your shears right, you will not get good scissor action. You will not be able to perform good scissor work if you're not holding your shears right. These shears are notched out to perfectly position your hand for scissoring so you don't fatigue your wrist and so you you get better results with your scissor work that's what I love about them they're very sharp they have a micro serrated edge it grabs the coat very nicely they're wonderful using your thumb to create the action of your shear the proper way to use your scissors is to have your ring finger in this finger rest your thumb gently in this finger rest not all the way through just resting there so you can easily make the shear move the way it needs to move so when you're scissoring you're trying to hold still your wrist and your arm and just move from the shoulder really pretend your arms in a cast when you're scissoring that's that's how you do it. You don't want to be moving like this. And when you come in to scissor, you don't want to push into the coat and scissor. You always comb up and scissor down. Your scissor work is just shaping and outlining your groom. You know you may be holding your brush wrong when you brush a dog. There is a right way and a wrong way to brush a dog. Obviously, we always brush the dog in the lay of the coat the direction the coat naturally lays against their skin. That is the lay of the coat. So we always brush, no matter what the breed is, always brush with the lay of the coat. Why? Because you can damage the hair follicles if you go against the lay of the coat. Now, here's the big secret. You are probably holding your brush wrong when you brush your dog. When you brush a dog, you're not brushing a dog like this, okay? you could definitely damage the skin. And damaging the skin can lead to really bad things. Brush burn is a real thing. It means that you're brushing in the same area a little too hard for too long. We don't want to cause brush burn, so we always move along when we're brushing. But I want you to look at how I'm holding my brush. Do you see that? I am. My brush is basically laying in my hand. I need to let my tools do the work. They have a job to do, just like me. So look at that. So the, the brush is literally flexing against the dog. I'm not brushing the dog like this. That's dangerous. If you are putting too much pressure on your, when you're holding the tool, not letting the tool do the work for you, and if you're pushing too hard, you're gonna damage the skin. So. By holding the brush lightly and gently in your hand, good job, girl. This is the proper way to brush a dog. I should be able to stack the brush out of my hand. I'm holding it that loosely. So, get the brush in! You can see that, that I am holding each nail between my thumb and a finger. I'm pushing up on the back of that knuckle so that I can see the nail and then holding it with my thumb and my finger.
Lee. I am a certified professional pet groomer since 2003. I am also a content creator on YouTube. I have a YouTube channel called Go Groomer, and on that channel, I bring a new voice to the pet grooming industry, one that includes pet owners as a valuable consumer. By sharing my secrets of the pet grooming industry on my YouTube channel, it allows me to give pet owners the opportunity to provide quality care for their beloved pets at home, increasing value to their pets' lives as well as increasing the bond they share with their pet. It's pretty awesome.